Hello, pilots of the internet. As many of you know, the Foldable Flight Paper Airplane Designers Contest is currently ongoing. So if you design paper airplanes and you want your chance at having them featured on this channel, be sure to head over to foldableflight.com slash contest where you can learn how to enter your designs. Now, in honor of that fact, today I am going to teach you how to fold a paper airplane designed by one of last year's grand prize winners. His name is Alex Carlson, and this plane is called Alexi, and it might just be the coolest jet you have ever folded. Now, as you can see, this plane looks absolutely amazing. I love the angle change in the wings, the two tail fins, and the afterburner at the back of the plane. Not only does it look great, but it actually flies really well too, and you can throw it over 100 feet. So if you watch this tutorial and enjoy this plane, be sure to give Alex a new subscriber on his YouTube channel. There is a link in the description below. And with that said, let's see this plane in flight and I'll teach you how to fold it. Three, two, one, go. All you will need in order to fold this paper airplane is a sheet of A4 paper or eight and a half by 11 inch paper. If you're using eight and a half by 11, be sure to fold the top three quarters of an inch down, and that's going to be along your top edge. Otherwise, all of the steps are the same. And with that, we're going to begin now by folding the right edge to the left edge. And we'll go ahead and open that up. And now fold so that you're creating a triangle. You're taking this edge to this edge here and your crease should go right through this corner. And we'll do the same exact thing on the other side now. So we're folding this edge here, the left edge to land on the bottom edge. Increasing just like that. And now we will open it up, flip the paper over, and fold this whole top edge down so that we're going right through the intersection of these creases. As you do this, you can try to line up the creases you have on this layer with the creases on the layer behind it. and it should look like this. Now we will flip the paper over again and just fold on the existing creases we have. And it should look like this. Now we'll go ahead, flip it back to this side and I'm going to fold this edge here to land on the center crease, but as I do that, I let the layers behind kind of escape just like that. And then I take that edge to the center. And I'm creasing, but the thing I'm creasing is actually behind that top layer. And I'll do the same exact thing on the other side, allowing those layers to release. and it should look like this. Now I'm going to kind of unfold this and pull out the section behind. And I'm doing that on both sides so that kind of escapes. And you can see when I close that back up, I should get this triangle here, which I can then stand and squash fold by kind of forcing the pocket open and pushing it down. I want to make sure the crease here on this top layer lines up with the center right there. You may need to reform the creases on this top layer just a little bit to ensure that. And it should look like this. 
Now we're going to perform a petal fold on this top section, and to prepare for that, we're going to fold this edge to the center crease. Do the same thing over here. And now I'll go ahead and rotate the paper so that this point is closest to me, and I kind of pull this pocket forward, and as I do that, I push in on those existing creases, and then I want to kind of take this straight to a point right at the middle. I'll show you what I've done here in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. But you can see I'm kind of forcing those into a triangle that points, and then I can push that all the way forward just like that. I'm going to fold this triangular flap down and you can see I've got a crease on that top layer. We'll use that as a reference point in a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it back into this position here. And now I want to fold this out right along the edge of that layer. And I'll do that on the other side as well. And it should look like this. And now I'm going to make a crease that starts from this corner here, and I'm going to land this edge along that back edge there. So my crease again needs to start right at that corner. And then I'm swinging this into alignment. You can see that needs to line up with the back edge. Once I've achieved that, I can crease. And I'll do the same thing on this side now. As I do this, my crease will start here. I'm actually looking for the spot where this layer intersects with this layer, and I need to make sure that's happening right along this inner crease, and also this back edge is landing on the back edge of the plane. So, something like that looks good to me. And you can see the intersection of these two layers, this one and this one, right on the center crease. Okay, and now with the plane in this position, I'm going to fold this edge here to that edge right there. You want to make sure you hold your layers and they don't slip at all as you do this. And then I will open that up, and I'm going to use this crease I just made as a reference point now. And I'm folding, so my crease will start right where that crease is intersecting this diagonal layer. And I'm kind of lining this edge right here up with that crease, just like so. And you can see the point of what's going to become one of the fins kind of goes just past that edge. And so now we can fold this in half, just like this. And when we look to do the other side, we can find that little point of the fin, and we can just fold this fin to perfectly match up with that one. Okay, so now we know that's symmetrical, we can just open that back up, and it will look like this. Now we can go ahead and unfold either side here and I'm going to fold this edge here into the center. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm going to use that reference point I mentioned earlier. You can see we have this line right here and the central line. The point where those intersect is our reference point here. And I'm going to kind of start my crease right at that reference point. And then I want to crease down to this corner here. Kind of opening up what will become the wing of the plane. And I'll do the same thing on the other side now. 
matching this wing to the first wing. So I can start my crease there. I'm actually going to just fold it in half and fold this wing to match up with the first wing. Okay. So it should now look like this. I'm now going to actually uh, fold this little section right here out to this edge. So it's a little tricky. Again, you want to hold and really control your layers as you do that. But as you make that crease, it should look just like this. And we're doing that on both sides here. And we'll unfold that and fold in just like this. And now we want to look at the intersection here between that crease we just made and the existing crease we had. So right there's our intersection and I want to fold from that point down to there and this corner. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just kind of pulling this open right to that point there and starting my crease and you really want to try to keep this crease straight. And a big key to doing that is making sure right at this point down here that you're getting a nice straight crease and then kind of working back towards this and never nailing anything perfectly down until you're ready to do the full crease because you feel like you've got it pretty well lined up straight to this target here. And once you do, then you can kind of pull it in either direction just a little bit Create just enough tension that you're creating a nice straight crease between those points. And there you go. So I'm doing the same exact thing on the other side now. Here's my reference point. And I just want to make sure that my crease is going to end up going right to this point here. And there we go. Okay, so another little tricky step here, as I fold my wing back out, we are going to end up basically folding on this line here, the one we've got here, but we're kind of allowing that to slide. And this layer is going to end up on the top edge of the wing. So you can see this kind of gets pinched right here and you pull the slack out there and then you lay that flat like that. And what that does is it puts that strong reinforced edge at the front of the wing on the top of the wing. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So with it in this position, I'm kind of pinching this right along that crease, allowing that slack that's here to get pulled out of it. And then when I'm ready, I can press that flat just like so. Okay. I'm sorry to say it, but now we have to do some unfolding of things we've already done. So we're going to actually back up quite a bit here to this state right here. I know, but those creases you have will make it easier to put it all back together. And now we need to fold this edge here up to the top. There is a reason why we didn't do that already earlier in the process. I won't bother you with the details, just trust that yes, we did need to fold all of those steps before coming back here and doing this. Okay, so now we're going to fold in on these valley creases we have, fold back out just like that, fold in on this crease here, back out across the center, fold the wings, we're back in on this, just like that. And then we can fold the wings out. And now we're not quite doing that reinforced edge just yet. We're just folding it out right into this position here. And now you can see what the leading edge looks like. We're ready to put that back in place, but you can see we have this extra layer here. I'm kind of just moving that out of the way 
and doing the same thing. So I'm going to pull on that crease that we've already got, pull the slack out there, and do that same front reinforcing step, but leaving this layer kind of unaltered. And we'll do the same thing on this side, just kind of creasing right along that crease, using that crease as a hinge, and flattening it like that. And you can see what it looks like from the top. And this is going to become the little section that has the angle change to it. So now our reference point is where this edge here intersects that edge. So right here. And I'm going to start a crease there that goes down in this general direction. So I'm just kind of starting my crease right at that point. And I want to land this corner here along this edge. just like that and we'll do the same thing on the other side just like that and now we're going to fold this edge or sorry rather this outer edge to land just almost to the leading edge of the wing. I'm leaving just a tiny gap there because I'm going to be reversing this. Once I have that crease, which you can see here, I'm actually reversing right along that crease to tuck these layers behind, just like that. And I'm going to repeat those steps over on this side. So this outer edge goes almost to the leading edge of the wing. And then I just reverse that crease and send all of that back behind to tuck in and lock all that together. And we are getting there at this point. So now I'm going to go ahead and do some reversing, inside reversing here. So we've got these creases here. This one's already valley fold, but we need that one to become a valley fold. So I'm just gonna kind of pull on this, turn this here at the central section into a mountain fold and crease along that existing crease there to pull all that out like that. So it looks like this now, but then we have the next set of creases and these need to both be mountain folds now. So this one's already a mountain fold. I'll press everything in like that and then turn that into a mountain fold. So you can see now what it looks like. And we're ready now with our third set of creases. This one's a valley fold. They both need to be valley folds there and this center becomes a mountain fold. And finally, when we do all of those, you can see you kind of have an accordion there. It should all collapse into this shape and you can see that's going to be the tail fin for the plane. We need to do the same things on the other side here. So we'll open this up. We're kind of pulling this, that's a valley, this needs to be a valley. The next one, that's already a mountain, but the other side needs to be a mountain. So we just kind of pull that down. And then this we reverse back into that position there. And you can see it all accordions together. And you have your tail fin there. Okay. This is what it all looks like from the bottom. We are going to look at it from this side now. And I'm going to pull this open right along the same angle as the leading edge of our tail fin here. So you can see if I reach in, I can kind of pull. We have a hinge right here, which is this crease. And we can open that up all the way right to the center. Before I do anything here, I'll go ahead and make that same crease on the other side. So I open it up right along this hinge. Okay, and now looking at it like this, I'm going to fold this edge here to land right along this crease. And that's going to be fairly tricky. You kind of have to gather the paper, open up this pocket a little bit, and then align it. Just like so. 
And once you do, make sure that crease doesn't get caught too early. It needs to go all the way back to that point there. You can kind of press on that a little bit if you need to, to get it to work with you. And then once you have this, you're going to take this and make a crease that goes right from that point, the point where this crease is intersecting that edge, to this point here. And then once you do that, you take all the remaining slack and sweep it out just like that. And we can close that side up for now. Oh, no, sorry. Before we close it up with it in this position here, I want to fold this point here right along this line that we just folded to. That's our line. And imagine where this edge runs right through this layer we're folding basically to that intersection. Just the point right there, so our tail fins won't come to a complete point. They'll be blunted slightly, and you'll see that in just a moment. So once you have that, then we can close this up. We'll go ahead and do the same things over here now. So opening this side up, we have to pull this edge here to that crease. Again, we're gonna have to force this pocket open in order to do that. Make sure your crease runs all the way to this edge here, all the way to that edge. And then you're going to make a crease going from that point to this point right here. And then you take all the remaining slack out in this direction. And we just have to fold this point to where those two references intersect. Again, we're imagining where this layer passes through and that edge right there. And then finally, we can close that back up just like so. And it should lie just like this. Now we'll go ahead and flip this all over. I'm going to pull this open. I'm not doing a squash here or anything. I'm just preparing this layer. I'll run that right along this top layer, and then I'm going to pull all of these layers here right over this top diagonal right there. Just like that. I'll do the same thing on this side, kind of prepare this layer, then pull all of those right along that top layer. And we are now ready to do our jet fold. I like to start by just focusing on one side and creating a crease that runs right along this edge just by pulling all of this right over like this, right to this back point here. And you can see on the top side what I've done. That creates a crease running right along there on that layer. And then once I do that, I can kind of just swing that in and line everything up and book match it. Okay. Now let's go ahead and fold our tail fins up. If you fold them right along this edge, then you're going to end up with them not quite parallel to the direction of travel. So I recommend folding from this point here to just about there, not quite here where this edge is just a little down from there. So you can see what I do here. And you can see where that crease is. Just something close to that will work really well for you. And once you do one, you just flip the other side, you flip it to the other side and match it up. And then you can fold your wings up right along this bottom edge. Just like so. You can see we are pretty much done with this plane, but we need to lock it all together at this point. And I'm going to set it with the wings down and kind of open it up into this position. So you can see here, 
This is kind of my central section. I want to make sure that's something I can work with. I'm opening up the whole other half of the plane. And I want to fold this edge here to go right up into that section there. And then I'm going to unfold that and I'm going to fold this edge to the crease I just made. And finally, I'm going to take this edge that I have here and fold that all the way to there. And that will leave you with a nice keel for the plane, something to hold on to and throw it from. As I kind of, kind of maneuver all my layers right to where I want them to be, you can see I've got that spot now where I can hold and throw the plane. And all we have left to do here is kind of shape the wings, the fins, and the afterburner. So right here, these little sections back here are going to become the afterburner of your plane. And so right where they intersect the keel, you can start to kind of curl it into place. So you're just curling that and you tuck it in just like that. And then you can wrap the other side right along around it rather and tuck it in behind all the other layers. And you can kind of pinch it right there near the front and that helps it to hold its shape. And you can see that beautiful afterburner that the plane has. So now we're just going to set our tail fins vertically. Set our wings horizontally and you can see if they buckle or curl too much, you can kind of curl them in the opposite direction just a little bit to help flatten them out. But your plane may be different than my plane and pretty much you are ready to go. So thank you so much for folding this plane with me. I hope it flies well for you, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. I'm now releasing a new tier where you can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane, and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.